Welcome. In this video, we're going to be examining a topic called multiple regression. Um, I would recommend that uh, you view my simple linear regression in Excel video, uh, especially uh, in order to get a special add-in installed. Okay, so what I've given here is some data I created. Let's suppose uh, I've given a quiz to students and I have re recorded their 10 quiz grades from highest to lowest. Perhaps I've also asked them how many hours they studied for that quiz and I get the second column here, study time. And then attendance, I've kept track of that so I know what percentage of classes uh, that they've attended leading up to that quiz. Now with linear regression, simple linear regression, we could use either study time or attendance to try to predict what a person's grade was. Uh, fortunately, we don't have to do any calculations on our own. Excel will do those. So make sure you click on your data tab. Again, I'm assuming you've installed data analysis. So I'll double click on that. And now what I want to do is select the regression. Drop down here, you might have to scroll down to find it. So here we go. Let me erase a couple things here from a previous problem. Uh, okay, input the y range. y, which is the dependent variable, is what we're trying to predict. And in this problem, we're trying to predict grade. I'm not just going to select the numbers. I'm going to include the heading word grade there. It's known as a label, so make sure you have the labels tab checked. Okay, and silly me, I just went and erased what I had. All right, now for the input X range. Well, we could use either study time or attendance to try to predict the grade. Let's try study time. I'll select all of that. And next for output range, I will go and uh, just decide where I want to put this table of information. I'll put it underneath over here, say A13. I'm not going to worry about these other things. And I'm going to click OK. All right, some of this is a little hard to read. I'll go and enlarge this a little bit. There we go. Uh, one thing I always check first, observations, 10 observations. Double check to make sure I've selected all of them. Now, a very important figure when you're using one variable to make a prediction is the R squared value. This value, 0.63. It's saying that 63, approximately 63% of the variation in grade is explained or predicted by study time. So in other words, it's saying that study time does help predict grade. It's, it's not an extremely large uh, value. We would, we would hopefully have something larger. And if we wanted to write the equation here, what would be the equation for grade? Well, it would be the intercept, grade equals 56.75, so on, plus 6.522 times the study time. So your intercept is all by itself, and then it is the coefficient times the amount of study hours. We'll play with, with that a little bit later in this video. But what I'd like to do is, uh, just while we're at it, you know, it's kind of begs the question, why don't we try to use attendance instead to predict grade? If we get a larger value of R squared, then that would suggest that attendance was a superior predictor of grade. So again, I will go to data analysis. I'm on regression. And the only thing I'll have to change will be my input X range. Again, X is doing the prediction. That would be, in this case, attendance. And I guess I don't really want to rewrite it over the previous output, so uh, I'll put it, perhaps I'll start it in the same row, but just move it far enough over. Let's see, I think everything looks good there. I'll click OK. Um, and enlarge things a little bit. Hmm. R squared this time is point. 60. So 
Although attendance has some explanatory power, some predictive power, it, it turns out that it's a little bit less actually than study time. Now here, if you were to use just attendance to predict the person's grade, it would be their grade equals like 29.6, you know, round to whatever you want, plus this 0.67 times the number of uh, the, the number showing the percentage of classes attended. Okay, so so far we've tried them both separately. It looks study, like study time was better. Well, again, this is just a review of simple linear regression like I showed in that other video. But what I want to show here is multiple regression. And what multiple regression does is it simply allows you to use more than one variable to try to predict something. Now, we won't know for sure until we try it, but it's possible, you know, that if we use both study time and attendance, that that would be a stronger model. Now, fortunately, with our regression tool, it's really a piece of cake. There's, it's, it's very easy to do the entry. So make sure, again, that you are on regression. And uh, our Y range, of course, will still be grade, so that's fine. Let's erase the input X range. And what you can do is simply copy both those columns. At, you have to do it them both at the same time, study time and attendance. So notice I have, you know, column B and C. Now, here's one trick, or rather, maybe not a trick, but a warning. When you do a multiple regression model, the variables you select have to be adjacent to one another. Like let's suppose I had another column D and another column E and I wanted to use what was in B and E. Um, you might think, oh well just select one column then put a comma and do the other. No, they have to be next to each other. So what you could do is like insert some columns and do some copying and pasting and, and put the two columns that you're interested in next to each other. You know, so you have to do that. No big deal, but I just wanted to let you know that, that is necessary. So now for our output range, you know, again, uh, let's put it somewhere where it won't be over the other stuff. I'll, I'll just come down here a little bit lower and put it there and click OK. Now, when you look at that, if you see the R square value, you're probably immediately going, ah, best model of all, 71%. But here's a trick. Every time you do a regression, you get notice all these same uh, entries here, multiple R, R squared, adjusted R squared. But when you use more than one variable to make your prediction, that is multiple regression, you don't use R squared. You use here this value, adjusted, R squared. Okay? So R squared, if you're using one variable to make a prediction, more than one adjusted R squared. Now let's see if it is the best. Well, it is the best, actually, only marginally so, right? Because the first time um, we had an R squared of 0.63. So you continue to use R squared for the single variable. But down here, that's 64. You know, so we have 63. Use R squared for this one, use R squared for that one, but then when you use two variables, use adjusted R squared. So 0.634 is a little bit larger than 0.631. In practice, you know, I wouldn't be too excited about such a small improvement. I'd, I'd really like to see something larger. But while we're at it, let me talk about the, some of these other things that haven't really been mentioned so much previously. There's just a few of them that I'd like to, um, to talk about. Near the end of this table, so I can enlarge this enough here, make it a little more visible. Okay. You see how we've got a lower 95% and upper 95%? In statistics, you've learned the concept of a confidence interval. And a 95% confidence interval essentially 
essentially says that you have 95% confidence that the true value will be between a lower value and an upper value. So, for example, let's look at the study time there. The study time coefficient varies from negative 1.73 to 9.7. That's a very wide range. And so what it's saying is we can be 95% confident that that coefficient, which notice that coefficient is 3.98, 95% confident it'll be between these two values. And I wouldn't be very happy using that in the real world to make a prediction because these values are so wide. Well, just to make this example easy to view, I only use 10 observations. Real-world regression models, you want to use, well, I would recommend at least 30 lines of data. And honestly, nowadays, it's, it's in many cases very easy to get data. You might be able to get hundreds of lines of data, and that will help tighten up this confidence interval. Okay, so quite frankly, this kind of stinks here, but again, it's just for the sake of the example. Uh, now, this, um, this information here should help us to make predictions. So let's actually practice doing that. Essentially what this is saying is that a person's grade can be predicted um, using the values in this formula here. So how about to predict that grade? Let me let me back up a little bit. Over here, let's create a little table where we will enter uh, a person's, now remember what the two predictor variables were? Study time and attendance. So let's, uh, let's suppose we have study time here and attendance. All right. And I'll, in a moment, we'll put values in here to try to predict what a person's grade would be. So over here for the grade, I'll set it up as a little tiny table also. Let's create the formula for grade. So put an equal sign there in that cell. Now, the intercept will have no variable attached to it, so just click on that. Let's click on it. Uh, you know, we could type in 37.8, but what the heck? Let's just click on it and get a nice, nice good answer. So we, we click on the intercept. That's like your y-intercept. Now do a plus sign. And now what you should get is the next coefficient, the 3.98, and that will be the coefficient of the study time, meaning it will be multiplied times your study time. So how do we multiply it times study time? Well, I'll do the times. That's your shift uh, numeral 8 on your keyboard. And the study time, well, uh, let's click on this cell here where I'm going to put that study time. So I'll click on that cell. Now let's do another plus sign. And now it would be the coefficient of attendance. So we click on the cell with the 3.66, and we multiply that. And we want to multiply it times the number of hours, uh, not hours, but the percentage of time the person attended. Well, that I'm going to put in the column here, so right there. Okay, so it's always the intercept by itself, plus your co next coefficient times whatever that value is, plus your next coefficient times whatever that value is, and let's do an enter. Now, right now, notice... Um, this answer doesn't really make sense because the answer you're getting here is coming up because you had a zero for study time and a zero for attendance. Um, generally speaking, this equation will be most accurate if we use study times and attendance that fall within the original data. So how about that's, uh, let's pick a study time of, how about Five. Okay, just see what happens. Let's suppose someone studies five hours, and then let's suppose their attendance is, um, let's see, what was the lowest attendance we had here? 60. 
So this person studied a fair amount for that quiz, but let's say that their attendance was rather poor. They only attend 60% of the time. Well, if you'll click Enter now, it will give you an updated prediction of what the student's grade will be. Now, I'd like to, to uh, end this video by pointing out that sometimes linear, linear models are simply inadequate. Keep in mind that the, the word linear, um, you know, think of straight line. Well, sometimes a straight line is simply not the, the best way to model data. What I'm going to show you in the next video is uh, how to introduce curvature into your model. We'll be looking at what is called quadratic regression.